All right, guys, so this is going to be a quick overview and introductory video to our next topic, which is going to be plants. So this is just a little bit of background, classification, systematic naming, that kind of introduction to what a plant is and how we organize them into families and what are some of their distinguishing characteristics. So let's step through it. It should be pretty short. Here we go. <clears throat> so unlike animals, plants do something truly unique, something called an alternation of generations. And you don't have to understand it in its complete entirety, but you do have to understand why they do this and how it leads to them being plants and not something completely different. Um, it's kind of like their life cycle, and you're going to see them go through a bunch of divisions, mitosis and meiosis, and also fertilization, but it happens in a very unusual way, at least unusual for an animal. You know, this is, this is something very specific to just plants. So the way it starts off is through mitotic division. We produce something called a gametophyte. And a gametophyte is going to produce gametes, so sex cells, but they're going to be haploid. So you'll have your male plant or male part of your plant producing a male gametophyte, and then a female part producing a female gametophyte. These are going to meet and join through fertilization, and when they fertilize, they're going to fuse together to form a zygote. The zygote is going to develop through mitosis into what we call a sporophyte. The sporophyte is going to be diploid because you're getting two sets of genes, one from the mommy plant and one from the daddy plant. <clears throat> Excuse me. So your sporophyte develops into what's going to become a multicellular organism, a diploid organism, and then we're going to go through meiosis. So in meiosis, your sporophyte is going to produce spores haploid spores, and this is done through meiosis. So we're not making gametes, we're making spores. After spores are made, the spores are going to be haploid. They're going to germinate and divide through mitosis to form a gametophyte, and then the cycle repeats itself. So we're going to make two kinds of cells. We're making gametophytes or gametes, and then we're making sporophytes or spores. So like I said before, this is very unique to just plants. Animals don't do that. We don't make spores. We just make gametes and we call it a day. <clears throat> so originally, all plants or plant-like material were watered, well, and they still are water-dependent, but they, they actually resided full-time in the water. So one of the common ancestors of land plants is some kind of green algal form of, of life. Um, through a series of adaptations and evolution, they were able, to, able sorry, <laughs> to leave the water and develop into the four main classes or, you know, subsections, if you like, of the land plants that we now recognize. Those being non-vascular plants, things like mosses um, and ferns, and seed, seedless vascular plants and gymnosperms and angiosperms. So, there are four main groups bryophytes, ferns, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. And we'll step through all of them individually in a minute. So let's talk about what we needed to change in order to go from a completely water dependent, in the sense that I'm completely living in water, to a plant that can now support its life on land. We had to have some ad adaptations along the way. The first thing is you have to prevent dehydration. If the plant dries out, the plant dies. So one of the things that plants evolved would be, or was, a waxy cuticle. Then we have to have some way of exchanging the gases needed for photosynthesis. So we evolved a stomata. Then we had to somehow obtain water and minerals. We still need water, we're just not going to live in it anymore. So we evolved roots. We have to be able to support ourselves. So we evolved support systems in the form of xylem, which are fortified with a material called lignin, which we'll talk about in more depth when we get to plant anatomy. Then somehow, we still have to reproduce. Now, when we reproduced before, our little sporophytes and gametophytes 
could actually swim in the water that we lived in. But we're not in water anymore, we're now on land, so how are we gonna get our gametes around without actual water? So we evolved pollen and pollination strategies. And then we have to somehow protect our growing embryo from dehydration, and we also have to supply it with some kind of food, so we developed or evolved the seed. All right, so here are just some examples. Here's that waxy cuticle, which is why you can see these beads of water on this blade of grass. Here are our stomata, and then here's a very extenuous root system, all in the effort to get water. All right, so let's start off by talking about one of our main classes of plants. These are the bryophytes, and bryophytes are non-vascular land plants. Examples would be things like mosses and liverworts, and hornworts. These are hornworts that are pictured right here. Um, Non-vascular means that they have no vascular system. When I say no vascular system, they have no xylem or phloem. None. They don't have any of these. That's what makes them non-vascular. Their gametophyte, which is haploid, is photosynthetic and it's what we call the dominant generation. This just means that the plant spends the majority of its actual life in its gametophyte stage. They are what we call ground-hugging plants. Why? Well, if you think about it, if your support comes from your xylem, and I don't have any xylem, I can't grow very tall. So it explains why these kinds of plants are found fairly close to the ground, and they're normally not very tall, even if they grow fairly you know, taller than normal, let's say they tend to be kind of droopy because they have nothing to hold them up. <clears throat> okay, our next category would be our ferns. Now, ferns are vascular, but they're seedless. Instead of making seeds, they make spores. So examples of these would be horsetails and, of course, ferns, like what's pictured right here. Unlike your bryophyte, their dominant stage is their sporophyte generation where they are diploid, <coughs> excuse me, and you find them very commonly in damp areas, and it's because their sperm cells are flagellated. They have to be able to swim around to actually get to the eggs and fertilize them. So these guys, even though they grow on land, they don't grow too far away from water. They like swamps, they like river um, banks, any place that's fairly wet and fairly close to water is where you're gonna find them. Okay, angiosperms are my favorite. They're probably what most people think of when they think of a plant. It's because they're the flowering plants. They produce all the pretty flowers with all the pretty colors and all the pretty nectar, or the, the nice smelling nectar, I should say. So any kind of plant that you can think of that makes a flower is going to be an angiosperm. So a bunch of trees, lots of different flowering plants like hydrania's and lilies and roses and all of those things, all of them will be angiosperms. Their, do uh, their dominant sorry, generation is the sporophyte generation. Again, this is where they are diploid. And they make both flowers and fruit. Now, here's a little tidbit. You can't make a fruit unless you have a flower. That's why the only people that make fruit, or sorry, the only plants that make fruit are your angiosperms. They are the most abundant of all species of plants on Earth. So we have more flowering plants than we have anything else. All right, um, I left out one that I just realized. So I'm gonna have to like draw in on a slide for you. So I'm gonna add a slide right here. If I remember how to do that. I don't know how I missed this. No, that's not how you do it. Here we go. Okay, the last class that I left out is a class called the gymnosperms. And gymnosperms are, or mean, naked seed. These guys are vascular. Good examples would be things like pine trees 
and fir trees. Anything that looks like a Christmas tree, really, is an angiosperm. And instead, uh, they don't produce flowers, and they don't produce fruit. Instead, they make cones. And the cones house their seeds. And they have two kinds of cones. They have female cones, and they have male cones. Right, they are also sporophyte dominant. They tend to grow really big and in fairly cold areas. So those are our main classes of plants. Hopefully this was a quick short introduction and it wasn't too difficult. And I will see you hopefully next week if we have Nesta. Have a great one. Bye guys.